So Bill, I want to jump right into this because you and I talked a little bit uh, before this and we've talked in the past and, you know, I think for my audience, we talk a ton about the technical and those are a lot of the questions that I get, but there's so much power in, in, in understanding the business side. So first right in, you talk about the chief data officer for my audience or for anybody, what, I mean, what does a chief data officer do? Like what is, what, what is the CDO role? Yeah. So I, I think the chief data officer for most organization has become a mini me CIO. And what I mean by that is I think the role of the chief data officer in most organizations is not very fun or creative or provocative. And I'm on a mission to actually change the nature of that role. I want that role to become the chief data monetization officer, because I believe that organizations need to have a senior executive whose single focus is figuring out how do I get value out of my data? Um, so this chief data, so I'm on this crusade trying to get organizations to realize that, that, the, that there's, there's all kinds of unique economic value associated with data and analytics. And, and the chief data monetization officer probably doesn't and shouldn't have a technology background. I'm gonna argue their background should be economics. Because you think about what economics is about, economics is about the creation of wealth and value and how you use assets to create value. Well, that's what, that's what data is all about. And you use analytics to convert raw data into valuable, actionable customer product and operational insights that you can use to derive and drive new sources of value. So, so Thomas, my mission has been the chief data officer, you look like a CIO kind of person, don't want that person. I want a chief data monetization officer who lives and breathes, who wakes up every morning and says, my job is to figure out how to get value out of that data. And it's charted with, with integrating across the entire organization, not just within IT, but with sales and marketing and operations and engineering and everybody else to figure out where and how can we use data to drive new sources of value. No, I like that. So um, in this, in, in, I, I'm going to dig into this in a couple different ways, but first, all right. All right so in that role, so um, you, 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 you get to decide this. So who does that person report to now? Uh, well, well, who does that report to report to now? And where do you think that structure should be in the organization in Bill's, Bill's most excellent adventure for, for, for your organization? Now, Bill's most excellent venture. <laughs> it's a great. So I think this role should report to the CEO. See, now, I said, right, right away, people are, oh, CEO, that's your schmarzo. Why don't you just, why don't you just make them the CEO <laughs> themselves, right? Well, I would do that, but I don't want to get bogged down with all the crap that goes on with dealing with stockholders. No, th this is a role that needs to sit at a level where this person can easily step across the organizational boundaries and can help organizations to leverage and exploit, reuse, share, refine these data and analytic assets. If they're buried underneath IT, they'll never get anywhere because no one takes IT seriously from a business perspective. If you stick them in finance or marketing or someplace, then you've automatically put them into a box. And this is the problem with most organizations. We tend to want to put people in boxes. And once you're in a box, it's like a friggin' cage, right? You can't get out of it. This person needs to have the authority to be able to walk across and show sales, marketing, finance, product management, engineering, how this one data source, for example, can power some of their key use cases and can drive that collaboration across the different business units so that they all can share and reuse the same data, data sets over and over again. So in Schmarzo's most excellent adventure, this person reports high in the organization and is charted with driving the overall across the organization use and monetization of these very valuable and economic or economically unique data and analytic assets. Let's, we, let's drill into this for a second. I mean, uh, <laughs> no, this, go, go ahead. And, go, go this ahead. is why this is such an important conversation. This is why I think that this, the person who runs this role needs to have more of an economics background than a technology background. Here's the reason why <clears throat> data as an economic asset, never wears out, never depletes, and the same data set can be used across an unlimited number of use cases at a marginal cost equal to zero. Now think about that. Marginal cost equal to zero. I have this asset. I can use it over and over and over and over again. It never wears out. It isn't, data is not the new oil. No, data is like the new sun. It never goes away. It's always providing energy for us. And so first off, from a data perspective, the thing that destroys and hinders the economic value of data are data silos. 
if you can't share data across the organization, I can't take advantage of that economic multiplier effect, right? I can use that data over and over again at a marginal cost equal to zero. So that's number one is that data from an economics perspective is unlike any other asset we've ever seen in our life. And we, we, we tend to treat it like, like it's, we use an accounting mindset to try to put it into a box. No, don't put it in a box, no boxes. We want swirls and let this thing swirl across the organization driving value. Now here's part two. So while data has this very unique asset that can be used over and over again, analytics is engineered correctly, will actually get more valuable the more that they are used, right? Think about an asset you could have, maybe it's a car, maybe a Tesla. And I love Elon Musk. When he made this statement, he made this provocative statement, which most people still don't understand what he was meaning by this. He says, he said, I believe that when you buy a Tesla, you are buying an asset that appreciates in value, not depreciates. Now, all the accounting people go, well, what, what the hell does that mean? Assets, you depreciate assets. You take them, you write them off. Yeah, real you estate, 27, year, 27 and a half years over, over time, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's saying, nope, wrong model, wrong frame. You've already lost the game. You're thinking the wrong way about it. He's saying, no, I can build an asset by the use of AI and across a million Tesla cars these cars are continuously learning. Every time they turn a corner, every time they go past the passenger, every time they go down the road, they're continuously learning. And every night, the learning from each one of those million cars gets sucked up to the Tesla cloud in the sky and gets aggregated and then back propagated back to every car. So anything that one car learns about a particular driving situation, now each of those million cars have learned it as well.